Eric Willicke here. Today's video is going to be another small business video talking to small business owners, local small business owners, which is really cool, and uh, just kind of getting a feel for what's going on. So today I'm here with Jessica, aka Figgy Fred. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here today. Of course, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, so is that really what you want me to say? <laughs> Do you want me to say your last name or anything? Um, honestly, I don't know. Sponsored by a broker. 
So the broker is like the umbrella that houses the agents. Okay, got it. Sorry. So, like, you know, there's, if you see a real estate office, there's a broker that only runs that, and then there's agents that report. To got them. it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So that's my mission now is I'm trying to um, create more resources for my agents and things like that so I can grow my team. Got it. That's so cool. Yeah. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And then you're, I'm sorry, did you off your e-commerce? And then I'm diving into e-commerce. Now, so okay. that stuff is a little under the wraps, but I'm okay. definitely coming out soon, yeah. and it's something that's relevant to my industry and day to day. And I think a lot of people can be used out of their own terms. That's awesome. Okay, so that's really exciting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. how long have you been in business, and how did you get started in this line of work? I know you kind of touched on the whole attorney yeah. thing, but so I've been doing real estate for almost 14 years now. Wow, yes, yeah, so I was in college, and I just stumbled upon this law firm, and I was like, that's a lie. I was calling firms. <laughs> I was calling firms in the yellow, like not yellow pages, but on yeah, online. Yeah. I looked at a list of firms because I wanted to intern with somebody. Because again, I knew I was going to be a lawyer. Okay. So I wanted to intern with an attorney, but I wanted to use my time in college to do that, so that by the time I graduate college, I had a job lined up with an attorney that might be able to help me with law school or recommendation. Okay. Like that. Okay. So I was calling, 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 and I was getting pushed around, thrown around, literally driving. To in, in like around the neighborhood, there's a law firm where I lived with my grandparents, and I was like, hmm, in the Bronx. Let me just call this guy. So that's why I say I stumbled, but I really was looking, wow. hunting for something. When I called him, he was like, sure, come on in. The senior partner came in. He was running a pretty substantial firm, especially for a firm in the Bronx. He had maybe 15 people on staff, which is decent. It was a general practice firm. So he kind of took me under the wing. Wow. And I did dabbled in a lot of things, whatever he needed help with, and then the real estate paralegal was leaving, the senior paralegal. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, this is your baby now. And he told me, here's a file, go to closing, call me if there's a problem. I'm like, wait, but <laughs> problem number one is I don't know what I'm doing. No way. He's like, just call me. Okay. Trial by fire. I went and did it successfully. We closed it, and then after that, he's like, the entire department's yours. Yeah. Holy so holy. I've been doing real estate since then, um, but as far as how long I've been in business, so I always worked for a company. Okay, like because I was really afraid to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, on my own. yeah. So I always worked for a company, but I always had my side hustle. Yeah. So I had side clients that I would work with. I was always doing my thing. Even in the firm, I used to take pictures of the envelopes he had, pictures of his his folders, like the fancy stuff. I'm like, yeah. okay, one day I know I need these items. That's awesome. So even yeah. then. I knew eventually I'd branch out on my own. Um, but the brokerage is only a year old. Okay. So the reason I decided to segue into the brokerage is because as an attorney, I saw that there's a big need for educating our clients. Because there's a lot of professionals out there that just say point here, sign, point there, sign. Yes. Don't absolutely. worry about it, I'll call you later. Yeah. You're not guiding them, you're not giving them any instruction, they're nervous. Yep. Um, and so I decided to open up the brokerage because I want to get to That's them before so cool. they get to the contract stage. Yeah. You know? Okay, I had a question. My yeah. question was, okay, so your grandfather basically inspired your drive for becoming an attorney. Was yeah. there any time during the course of that where you were like, it was always hard driving by, so <laughs> was there any time during the course of that where you were like, I don't want to do this? I oh, changed my mind. Every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Smacking you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> like in college, you're like, okay, I have a couple pages to read and I have a report. I'll just wake up the night before and I'll just throw some together 20 pages, whatever, whatever. You just throw yeah. some together. Law school's not that. Law school, you have about 150 pages to read a night. No. Yeah. And there's no raising your hand to answer. It's all cold calling. Um, some professors would assign certain people for certain things, so at least that prepared you for the days you'll be called on. But it was a lot of work. And because I'm going for punishment, <laughs> I did law school <laughs> at night while working full time. Wow. And because clearly, again, going for punishment, had my daughter at the end of the first year. Holy moly. So that, was, that was tough. I was up till four in the morning. That had to motivate you? Yes. My daughter, right? Oh, definitely. Because, um, for example, when I announced my, preg my pregnancy to my mom, her immediate response was, oh my god, 
what about school? I'm like, school? What about work? Yeah. I'm quitting my job. She was like, oh, what? I was like, yeah, I'm quitting my job. I have to finish school. She's like, but how are you going to make money? And how are you going to support her? I'm like, it'll take you itself out. What? So that's what I did. Wow. I always admire moms who are like in the workforce because like you know that they're like tigers. Like you know they're like ripping on his out, like do whatever they got to do to survive. And I feel yeah. like that's like so you. you I mean, have to be. small interactions I've had with you, I feel like that's very much you. Yeah, you have to be. When you first met me, who was I here with? Yeah, your daughter. And you were like a boss. Like, yeah. And your daughter's so well behaved. She knows the deal. Yeah. It's like, she has come at my old job. It was to be my last job. I used to have a cop under my desk for her. Like if she, no there was no way. school, she was with me Stop. in the office. Oh yeah, so she was like the office mascot. Stop, that's <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Oh my. One thing I have to say, this is really weird off record, but I remember when you were here with your daughter, and your daughter was giving you a little bit of attitude, and you're like, "What's the attitude for?" And she was like, "Sorry." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I literally was like, "Yeah, I'm sorry." Yeah. Like, I'm like, "You got that from me, girl." So you know, it's like the top mind. <laughs> oh yeah, I was so impressed. I was like, "Okay, okay." <laughs> All right. What? This is a good one. I feel like this is going to be a good one. Okay. What personal skills do you bring to the table that separate you from the rest? Okay, so one, I care. I know a lot of people say that, but genuinely, that's what brought me into the brokerage side of things. Um, and even back to the residential real estate side, because I used to do commercial real estate too, and I felt like there was a disconnect between okay. me and my clients. Now I feel like I'm helping people. So there's a different that's sense awesome. of feeling there. Um, I'm Spanish speaking, which is rare for this area that we're in. Yeah. Um, we're in Putnam. So it's, it's more, you know, finding Spanish speaking professionals is, is tough. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that need the work, need help. Yeah. Uh, so that, I'm also a licensed attorney, so that helps in my brokerage. And I think that the skills that I've gained along the way, I'm not a person that's done just real estate sales my whole life or just mortgages my whole life. Right. I know how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together because I've done title, underwriting, I've done. Um, represented buyers, sellers, and banks. I know how everything works, so I can better guide my clients. So I think that's the most important. Yeah. I knew you were going to say the bilingual, and that's the coolest thing, like, you know, that you can just... Or, no, you're fluent in both. Yes. That's amazing. So I learned how to read. So my grandparents always spoke to me in Spanish. My grandmother always told me, the more languages you know, the more worth you have in the workforce. Right? Yeah. Coming from a woman that never really had a job, so that was interesting. Uh, but she knew that. <laughs> um, and she taught me how to read Spanish by reading the Bible. No way! Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's how I learned how to, I always knew how to speak it, but learning how to read and write it was from the Bible. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. So now did you like major or a minor in like Spanish in school? No, or you just kind of didn't do it? I was such a disrespectful little piece of crap <laughs> to my Spanish <laughs> teachers. <laughs> no, were you, did you correct them ever? Like you were saying that wrong, 100%. Like in high school, I was, especially because during that phase where I was being a little jerk, I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> I didn't need to listen, just give me the assignments, and you know, jokes on me because I speak, I speak well in Spanish, but I'm Puerto Rican, I'm, it's not like the European style of Spanish, yeah, yeah. so there are certain, a little, certain differences, yeah. so teacher would definitely you know, so take the opportunity to correct them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Oh my gosh. All right. How do you market your business and how, like how are people aware of your business, social media, etc.? So initially it was purely word of mouth, okay. um, just referral based. Awesome. And then social media, you know, clearly social media is like blown up. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I need to, now that I was thinking about going into business for myself, I wanted to build a following. Yep. So I was on a salary position up until about a year ago when I opened the brokerage, but I knew that salary position was coming to an end. Okay. So I was like, uh, I need to figure out a way to establish a following now before I'm out on my own completely. Yes. So I started building my social media. Yeah. Yeah, like my mm-hmm. brand. Yeah. Um, and I focused more so on my personal brand. So mm-hmm. people, you know, you're you have to influence. You have to have an influence on your network, right? Mm-hmm. Your sphere of influence. Your first line of connection, yep. low hanging fruit, other people you know. Yeah. So it was whoever's following me on social media and right now is gonna start seeing this development. So they did. And then that led to them sharing my stuff and awesome. this and that. So my approach to it is information. So although I'm building my personal brand, my personal brand is again I care and I want to educate you. I'm gonna arm you with knowledge. So I have my figgy facts. So I took Love you that. that. I to <laughs> so I have my figgy facts. Hence figgy flash back right? Only I have that. So um I posted those figgy facts and they're like a hit. People That's love awesome. them and they send me like, hey, can you talk about this this time? 
and can you can we touch on that? Oh my God, this was so informative. Oh my God, this happened to me, and I wish I knew this beforehand. And yeah. So that's I think the route that I've been going with social media. That, I also feel like a few ad campaigns and things like that as will continue to grow, but it's yeah. definitely more time. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I love your Instagram because it's very much you, mm -hmm. and you can get a feel for who you are. Yeah. So instead of like you know going right in with who's this person who I'm gonna take and are they gonna help me and am I gonna feel stupid? How many times do people just feel like I don't know what that means, you right, know? Right, exactly. So, so I, that's really cool. I try to take it like layman's um, yes. term approach. Yep. Uh, and also it's just not me. So that was a, a dilemma I had um, throughout my career is I'm not the typical attorney, sh short nail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, that's <laughs> yeah, just that's not that's me. Nice. And yeah. even working in Midtown with these attorneys that definitely fit the stereotype, when they found that I was an attorney, it was, oh. And I love that. Yep. Yeah. Wow. You did, uh, all right, so let's get into that then. How do you feel as a woman in business? Because I, we kind of like talked about, like, are you comfortable talking about this? Yeah. Do you feel like oh, that's I'm, a thing? It's totally a thing. It's totally a thing. Thank totally you. a thing. It's 100% a thing. <laughs> um, and I'll give you a perfect example as to why it's a thing. So... Not only am I a woman in business, but I'm a Latino woman in business, right? So I'm in, a, in an industry, especially when I was in title underwriting, that's very male dominated, right? So I remember walking into an event, you know, I'm dressed up nicely and got my little name tag. I walk into the event and every other man that's in there, this bitch, they come up to me, hey, sweetheart, how are you? And they read my name tag, ESQ, Esquire. And, oh, Oh, you're an attorney here? Stop. I'm like, I sure am. Aren't you so-and-so? I just cleared your file. Congratulations. We'll get you to go on the table next week. Wow. And, you know, they, like, straighten their backs a little bit because they come with this, with a mindset of, like, she can't, this pretty, tall, curvy, mm -hmm. Latina woman. She's an attorney? Yep. But I take that as just fire that lights me, honestly. I yep. love proving people wrong. And it's something a lot of people know about me is um, if you want Jessica to do something, tell her she can't. I said the same thing. You I said the same freaking thing. You might tell me I can't. I'll do it. That's not the same thing. You will figure out a way. Yeah, I love that. You will figure out a way. Yeah. And I feel like as women in business, we have to do that. Yes, 100%. And yeah. it sucks that it's still kind of at that point. We've definitely come oh, a yeah. long way. Oh, yeah. We're actually allowed to work now. Yeah, right. So we've really come <laughs> a long way. Yes, yes. yes. Have you ever been like, we're not a good fit? Straight up, like, 
<laughs> uh, you're not a good client for me. I'm not a good. Oh, I fired myself. Absolutely. Wow. See, I always get fired my clients. <laughs> oh my God, I fired them. I fired them. Like, you're out. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Definitely. Because I feel, again, time to me is precious. Yes. So, I feel like some people don't respect that. And I got too many hats to wear. I got yeah. too many things I'm juggling, and I want to do the best for all of you. So, I need you to work with me in order for me to help you. Yeah. You got to help me help you. Yes. So, if you're not willing to do that, then we're just not a good fit. Yeah. Okay. This is weird because this is like a small business kind of thing, so I, I want to say this. Um, for any time that you've had to fire yourself or fire a client, it's so detrimental because money means everything to us, right? Like, we, like there is no paycheck coming in without us doing the work. So have you ever had that like internal struggle of like, basically I'll eat shit to make sure that I oh, make yeah. this money? Yeah, and it's a balance. Like there's definitely yeah. been clients that I'm like, oh, when I get to that point, whatever that <laughs> point is, I'm like, I will refuse <laughs> these people. <laughs> But right now you gotta eat shit. You gotta eat shit, right? You have to. I feel like these I'm in the trenches. Yes. You gotta be in the trenches for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back to the actual questions that I told you I was gonna ask. <laughs> okay. Where do you see your business in the next year, five years, ten years? Okay. Businesses. So I see it's funny you say businesses because I see them in different stages. I my goal is for them to be on autopilot and I'm running the show yeah. without me being in the trenches anymore. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, so that's the goal and how I achieve that for each one is a little different. So like the law firm, I have, I'll, again, type A control free. Mm -hmm. I have to rely on my support staff a little bit more and I plan on doing that because I do really have people that I trust. Um, but right now, because it's fresh that I'm in this 100% as an entrepreneur, it's like I need to make sure that every client that Everything is perfect because yeah. that affects my money. Yes. Um, for the brokerage, I did. I envision in a year more more agents. Uh, maybe a brick and mortar. Right now, things are so on awesome. the move. That yeah. Is, do you really need it? Yeah. But you know, we'll see. Uh, maybe a brick and mortar. I have a lot of things in the works. I def that's another thing. My goal is to establish such a great team that now I'm just giving my team the resources that, that they need, and I'm no longer out showing homes. Yeah. Unless it's for referrals and things like that. Uh, and the e-commerce, I have big aspirations for that. So I'm hoping that that becomes an autopilot thing too. That's great. Once I get it out there and really push it. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. So basically, stopping a type, type A personality and let it just... That's so hard. That is so, so hard. hard. I micromanage everything. I'm like... Me too. Me too. When I catch myself, it's funny because I actually recruited my mom. To help me with things, right? And I'm like, so I pushed it off for a long time because I'm like, I can't curse my mom out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, um, but it's actually been a great training, learning curve for me because it forces me to take a deep breath and go, yeah, this is how I want it. Let's schedule a time where we can do a Zoom training and I can show you, I can share the screen, I can give you control, and I'll show you how I do it. So that it gets done, and I'm like, you know, when I go back into look at a file, I know exactly where to look because it's done the way that I do it. Yeah. So it's been a great learning curve, learning experience. Yeah. Actually. Do you have any problems saying to somebody like straight up, "That's not the way I want it done"? No, and that's the problem. No, I think that's a great trait. That's a great. Yeah. Trait. I guess it's a matter of experience. It is. It is. <laughs> it's it's so good to, to be able to vocalize and say what what it is that you know you want or you don't want without it becoming a confrontation or an explosion. So I guess that's what you mean by delivery. It's so <laughs> like I remember I had an assistant. She would be able to walk to the front of my office door and just peek and go, mm, "It's not the time to talk to her right now." <laughs> Much easier, I'm sure, to 
you know, I have further reach. Yeah. And it's more convenient for my clients. So yeah. Yeah. kind of random, but were there a lot of like Zoom closings that you did during like no, so the way that we've been doing it now is they're still face to face, but there's less attendees. Like at my closing, I had myself, my friend, my dad, my <laughs> little, like everybody wanted to, you know, celebrate with me and be a part of it. You went us. I did. Congratulations. Thank you. That's so awesome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had everybody with me. It was like an event. Um, <laughs> now you can't do that. Yeah. So yeah. now you're stuck with the necessary parties only. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. But sometimes sellers or some clients will give you like a power of attorney so they don't have to go, but I still have to go. Okay. So, so you could be the power of attorney? Mm -hmm. the oh, wow. On their behalf. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Things you wish you knew about the small business or any, any aspect of this before you started? I wish I knew that there was no off switch. <laughs> so, again, it goes along with the type of personality. Like, it's tough. To, it's tough to shut it off. Yeah. And you know, if you miss a call, that means you might miss money. Yeah. Um, or you're an opportunity or anything that can help propel your business in the direction you want it to go in. So it's tough being a mom. Mom guilt sets in a lot when she like wants to play and I'm like, the big game, but the phone, I, one second, yeah. gotta get the phone. So I wish, I wish I was um, a little bit, I wish I was more prepared for that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Any tips? Any tips on time blocking <laughs> and management? Because I can't shut it off. I just don't know. How to turn I, it I off. think that's. I think so many people go into. I, I don't know. You probably can go into it this way, and I can go into it this way. But I think so many people go into small business thinking like, oh, money just grows on this tree, and I pick it off. And it's like it is. It's more than forty hours a week. It's all oh, the yeah. time. Even like oh, when I'm yeah. home, people are like, oh, you're off days. No, I'm no. never off. I have to promote myself constantly. Like yeah. it, you never shut it off, ever. And so many people don't realize that. So people ask me, like my mom, initially before she was working with me, baby, do you have enough to work this weekend? Or do you, are you still working? <laughs> I'm like, are you still working? Do you still have work to do? That's my favorite. Yeah, do you still have work? Yeah. Mommy, there's always work to do. Yeah, always work to do. When I decide to do it, that's a different question, but there's always yes. something for me to do. My yeah. to-do list, I have a booklet. But I just keep jotting things down, and I feel like there's things on page one, I'm on page 20, and page one still hasn't gotten done. Yeah. <laughs> and you go back, it's like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so. It's never ending. Okay. It's never ending. I love those questions. Like, oh, did you work today? Oh, do you, are you still working? Or are you still, it's like, yes, this is my livelihood. There, I can't breathe air without this. Like, yeah. this is it. Exactly. Actually, that's all I can do is breathe air without it. <laughs> um, all right. Best advice for someone wanting to venture out as an entrepreneur. Sorry, these get a little repetitive. But. That's okay. No, no. Um, I would say best advice is time is your most expensive asset. Time, time, time. You give it, you never get it back. True. So invest it in something that's worth it. And to put it for my numbers people, let's say you want to be a millionaire at the end of the year. There's 40 hours in a normal work week. <laughs> that's times 52 weeks in the year. That's 2,080 hours that you will work. Divide that by a million, that's $480 you need to make an hour to be a millionaire wow. at the end of the year. Whoa. So if you're sitting on your sofa, legs up, watching Netflix for five hours, multiply that by 480, was it worth it? And when oh, you're an entrepreneur, you have to think about it that way because your time is money. Yeah. So if it's not worth, if that hour is not worth $480, whatever you're doing in that hour, then do something different. Okay, so now I have to you're just opening up the door for me. So, <laughs> are you somebody who like goes home and like watches TV like ever? I used to. I used to um, more when I was on the salary job. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's like I'm home, yeah. even though my emails would still blow up. I can respond to those from my phone. Yeah. I'm sitting on the sofa. Once I knew that that was gonna shut down, there was a new venture business. So I knew our corporate offices across the country were not gonna continue to finance us. So I was like, they're gonna shut us down. Um, Wow. I was like, I need to game plan. Now, the entrepreneurial lifestyle really set in here. And I found that I had no time for TV. Yeah. I found that I would start like watching Netflix on my phone while washing dishes. Yeah. And like in the shower. Like, yeah. That was my me time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my me time. Or folding laundry. Yeah. And then it turned to, I don't even do that. It turned to, I just canceled cable. Because I'm like, I. That's awesome. When I, I thought that. about it, I'm like, I haven't turned on my TV in three months. Yeah. What am I doing? Literally. So I can't do cable. I just have Wi-Fi in my house now yeah. because I just don't have the time to watch it. Yeah. 
Um, it's not even that it was a distraction. I just physically don't have the time to watch it because now I find myself watching YouTube tutorials. Yeah. While yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like podcasts all day. That yes. Like Self empowerment, business, and it's like I don't have time. Yeah. So I don't even have time for TV. Yep. Yep. I love that. I love talking to entrepreneurs and small business people because I feel like. Like, I can have a million clients here and like, you watch this TV show, you watch this TV show. It's like, I don't watch TV. I don't even know what you're talking about. And then you feel like a loser. Right. But then when you talk to somebody who's like minded, it's like, no, I'm on the right path. This is what I should be. Exactly. It's so weird. <laughs> exactly. Okay. How important is a business plan? This wasn't on the paper, but I wanted to bring it in anyway. How important is a business plan? A for business a small plan. business. Oh my God. This so is definitely important to you because you're a personality. Yeah, you have to plan everything. <laughs> everything. If you saw my calendar on a day to day basis, I like plan when I'm drinking water. <laughs> Interest rates are super low. There's not enough houses on the market to meet the demand. Wow. So like, 
agents are making money. Wow. And so the agents amazing. that are listening, like you need to save that money because yeah. in six months we don't know if we're still gonna have this flow. That's so nuts. You know, so, so scary. Yeah. The cash flow is good. Yeah. That's so hard. You plan me do it. And actually, I just hired a financial planner. Good for you. Yeah. So I had. It's actually a good friend of mine who I trust wholeheartedly. He's phenomenal at what he does. Um, and I would totally recommend his services because I think it's important for business owners, small business owners. We have to. We gotta be able to save smart. Yes know where our money is and be able to pull from it when we absolutely need it but not excessive or not to write something. You know? yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get, okay, mm. say you're doing like uh, somebody you know or somebody you know of somebody you know, do you ever get weird taking your percentage, like your percentage of like real estate or anything like, do you ever get funny with it? <laughs> so like that I love talking to people nope. like, like awesome. <laughs> I love it. Nope, Never. you're asking me for a service, I'm providing it to you and one thing I don't do is treat you any less because I have a personal relationship with you. So you're still gonna get the quality service that I give somebody I just met off the street that I was trying to, you know, relay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and my take is, and I'm thankful for my group, my core circle, they're in the, of the same mindset that if you're truly supporting me, you'll truly support me without asking oh, for me to reduce that. my yes. price for the same service. Yes, so you're not supporting me, I'm supporting you. Correct. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> in fact, um, a friend of mine opened up a cleaning business and I was really hesitant to have her even come clean my home because you're a luxury cleaning service. You know, you're top notch. Yeah. I'm not gonna have you do my house until I'm ready to pay you top notch. Top -notch. Because that's yeah, just what it is, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, can I have her information before you Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is she, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Does your business have a mission statement? I know reason that the business exists like an entrepreneur. Yes. So ultimately, it falls back on I want to be part of your story, right? So when you think of your home, what do you think of? Like when you're shopping for a home, what do you envision? Yeah, you the rest of your life, all the milestones. Right. Yeah. right, so you envision maybe you're growing a family, you envision holidays, you envision dinners, you envision hosting friends, creating memories. Where does that start? With the hunt for the home, yeah. right? So I really, really love the idea of being a part of that story, being That's the awesome. very beginning of that story. Like I help you make that happen. Yeah. And it doesn't stop for me personally as an as a real estate agent slash broker. It doesn't stop for me when I match make you with your house because now I also have my attorney hat. I won't play both roles on the same deal, but oh, you don't? I, no. Okay. No I don't. Um but I can handhold you the whole way. Okay. Efficiently, intellectually. Like I have the knowledge to be able to handhold you. Yeah. So it's really satisfying to see you get to that point. Okay, so you've been the attorney on like places that you haven't sold. Correct. And as an attorney, right now you strictly do real estate. Uh, yeah, I only do real estate. Real I mean, estate. I do okay. things that relate to real estate too. Like I will um, prep college attorney, create LLCs, talk about estate planning, things like that. Because right. it all relates to real estate, but real estate is my baby. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, so then you would just say, if somebody came to you to buy a house and you were their agent, you would say like, I am an attorney, but I won't do that? So basically, so what it is, is I can't be the broker, and this is New York State, I can't be the broker and be the attorney on the same transaction. Oh, that's like a law. Yeah, so there's oh, a little bit of a conflict of interest. Okay, okay. So how can I represent your interests as, as, so a broker is getting a commission, a pretty, yeah. a pretty nice commission, yeah. right? Yeah. I want the deal to close for my commission. Right. So if something goes wrong, the argument can be made, well, she just pushed it to close because she wanted a check. Oh shoot! So I don't want to put myself in a position where people go, but sh so she didn't represent me adequately as an attorney because she just wanted to close. So I don't even put myself there. Got it. Got uh, it. I don't even risk it. Okay. Um, wow. Sorry, I just don't go there. That's good to know. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. I don't want to close this up. I want to like think of more questions to ask. You guys, you hear me? I want to ask you more questions. <laughs> all right. Let's go with the last person that's on here, and we'll see if you think of anything else. What animal best describes you and why? So this question stressed me out. Like, <laughs> stressed me out. I was like, oh my god, what the heck am I gonna say? I don't want to say cliche. So, and, but it's not because I think it fits your personality so well. <laughs> so I was like mulling it over, and I'm like, I don't want to sound cliche. I was like, this would be really cool. <laughs> then I started. Then I started taking like calling my mom. Hey mom, <laughs> what animal would describe me? So funny. I don't know what my mother said. She's like, hmm, camel. No. What? I'm like, no, camel? <laughs> what does that even mean? What are the characteristics of a camel? She's like, well, you know, and she's cute. She tried twisting 
here. She's like, well, because you know, they, they just, they're very persistent and they just keep going despite their circumstances and elements. I'm like, that's cute. Uh, that's cute. That's kind of cute. cute. I picture them as just like big, curvy, fat creatures that just spit. Right? Yeah, that's cute. I drink a lot of water. And water. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> so she said, Pamela, I asked my one of my best friends, and she's really cute. She was like, a cheetah. Duh. I'm like, why? She's like, because. No, I'm sorry, her husband said cheetah. <laughs> she, her husband said cheetah. It's funny, he said cheetah because I am strong and I respond to texts really fast. That's hilarious. <laughs> I have like a notification OCD. If it's there, I have to respond to it. And if I have to respond to it, that means I have to take care of it when it comes. So people are like my quick responses. Wow. So it's really, I, they think I do it for them, but I really do it for me. For you, because you'll forget otherwise. Yeah. One of those kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my friend said, <laughs> oh my God, I can't remember what she said. But on the drive here, I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to say the animal that I've always envisioned. So I wanted this tattoo, right? I wanted this tattoo. I've always wanted this tattoo of a woman that kind of resembles me, but maybe my daughter, with like a headdress on, right? Like with a wolf. So that's kind of, that would be the animal. That's is, awesome. Is a wolf, right? Because what the hell do you think it took for me to get here to get through everything that we just talked about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Like, it's tough. And I fought my way, gnawed yeah. my way, and that's where I'm at. So yeah. I'm definitely, I like being the leader. That's cool. I have to be strong to get to where I am. And trust and believe I will protect my little cubs as much as possible. Yeah. My little, little cubs and my babies. So. I love that. And you had a good support group, which is cool, like that's the old path, right? Yeah. And that's really oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I am so, so thankful for the people that I surround myself with. That's awesome. I'm thankful that my daughter has strong women around her because all of my friends are doing their thing, you know? And that's so cool. Around yeah. Them. yeah. So it's awesome. Do you mainly hang out with people who are entrepreneurs? Is that like just the way it works out or, or not actually at all? Um, actually, I mean, when I think about it, yeah, a lot of, a lot of my my closest friends are people that are doing doing their own thing, even if it's just on the side. Yeah. yeah. Um, like my very best friend, I met her in college, but she is she's always looking for a hustle. She's also a producer for commercials, so like oh, she's moment. doing her thing yeah. and still always looking for a hustle. It's my daughter's godmother. That's awesome. Um, my best friend is she's in finance and does amazing. She's the one who you talked to when you were here. <laughs> her, yes. Um, and she does a phenomenal job, but she's the one that has a cleaning company on the side. Oh, no way. And she kills it at that. That's awesome. And she feels like she does, like her nine to five is so mundane because she's so good at it, it comes so easy yeah. that she needs something to challenge her. Yeah. So she's out there cleaning with her crew at 7 a.m. in Jersey and wow. doing her thing. Wow. Um, yeah, and I have to think of countless people, like David Stewart is big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clearly. Yeah. I have my friend's husband's calling me up, hey, I need you to set up an LLC for me, I'm going to go into this. I'm like, done, let's do it, bro. That's awesome. So, yeah, definitely, and it's, it's, it's helpful when you're surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded. 100%. You just get it. I hate those, not that I hate, but those friendships that are very high maintenance. Yes. I don't have time to call you. I agree. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next month. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But my core crew, they know. They yeah. get it. That's awesome. I might not hear from you in two months, but that's okay, because when I do, it's our time. Yeah. Here's a question. Can we talk a little bit about, like, a little bit more about LLCs? Because I feel like that's super important for small business, and you're probably the most knowledgeable person I know on it. So. <laughs> sure. So, so, sorry, and I just don't want this to end. So, go ahead. <laughs> So if your LLC owns this building, the LLC owns your car, that's what they can attack. Yeah. Um, but if the LLC, I'm sorry, if you, I think I reversed that. Personally, if you own these items, they can attack you personally yes. and everything else, your home. Yeah. So you put your business in the LLC so that they can only attack whatever the LLC actually owns. Right. So it's really, really important. It's actually a very simple process. Yeah. Um, 
I don't I don't charge much for it to be quite honest because it's so simple. I just think it's stupid to beat people over the head, especially if you have a vision and know what it is to be a business owner starting out. I'm not gonna charge you thousands of dollars to create yeah. something that takes me twenty minutes to do. Yeah. So if anybody out there does want to establish an LLC, reach out to your girl. I got her back. All of her information is gonna be linked down below, just so you guys know. Um, but I do want to still talk about this, and then I, and then we can actually say all your information. But um, the LLC, okay. So just say you have more than one business, and mm -hmm. they're kind of similar. Okay. Say somebody gets into real estate. Is it best to do each real estate under a different LLC so that if somebody goes after one, they can't get the other? It is best to separate them because you gotta keep track of your stuff. Right. Um, I personally think it's best to separate them. Let's say somebody like you wanted to open, get products mm -hmm. or start creating products. Mm -hmm. Do it separately Separate. from your yeah. salon, right? Because it is really a separate entity. You're gonna market yeah. that differently. You're gonna, it's different. There's less to attack now too. Right. Um, another thing that I would suggest is if you have multiple businesses, take out a, a policy that covers you on top of that. So you'll have like, like personally as an attorney, I have umbrella, I'm sorry, I have errors and emissions insurance, malpractice insurance, right? But I also own investment properties. So my investment properties have their each, each have their own insurances. Now, I also have an umbrella policy. What? That covers me in case one of those policies don't. Wow. So it's, it's important. Okay. And I always talk about this on my like social media, my videos and stuff, your team. Your team, team, team is so crucial. Yeah. The people that you keep by your by your side to protect you. And one of those people is like your insurance person, your financial advisor, your attorney. These are the people that really impact. You want to protect what you're working for. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So absolutely. it's important. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so all jokes aside, mm -hmm. insurance is probably the most, would you say that's like top? Top level, like don't even do a small business unless you oh, have yeah. insurance. Like I tell you, I cried. I was stressed out because I always had insurance with my full time job. Now it's gone. Right? So like when, when you think about that old school thing, yes. I, no really have, I have to seek out my own coverage. Yeah. And if it was just me by myself, I'd be like, no big deal. Right. Um, but now I have my daughter. So I have to think about that. So not only are we talking about medical or whatever, all that stuff, I'm talking like Life insurance, insurance, disability insurance. What if something happens to you? How do you yeah. recover that salary? You're right. Yeah. yeah. You definitely have to talk to people about that. Stuff. Yeah. I think it's really important. Yeah, I agree. That is that's a lot. Mm -hmm. So even okay. So back to the the LLC thing. So all right, just say I have this property and then I have another property. What would you do? Separate LLCs. I would. That's the attorney answer. Your CPA might tell you, oh, it's fine, you can just have more than one. The attorneys are like, you know, they're the ones that are petrified of something happening to you, yeah, lawsuit. Yeah. Um, we don't want them to be able to attack everything. Right, right. So, separate them. How important are separate bank accounts? So important. I keep everything separate. Yeah. Um, and then I pay myself like a salary. You do? Yeah. Okay. So, I keep everything separate. Um, makes things easier for tax time. Yeah. So my tax guy has access to my accounts, not access where he can pull money, but access where he can print my statements. Okay. And now I don't have to, you know, worry about my bookkeeping so much because awesome. my bank statements are my bookkeeping. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm buying, you see what I'm doing, so the receipts, that although I do keep awesome. them, it's just easier to keep track. And then at the end of the year, I actually just did this a week ago, I go in and I see, all right, let's see what all the debtors were, all the credits were, now you can really see quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. how you did. Oh, that's great. Without waiting for your bookkeeper or your accountant yeah. to tell you. Yeah. So I think it's super important. Wow. All right, so you pay yourself um, regularly. Yeah. What if, this is a crazy question, if you're not a small business owner, but if you are a small business owner, it makes perfect sense. What if one month you don't make enough to pay yourself that, that price that you do? Then you just don't? You just don't. So that's how I do it. Um, personally, I kind of try to live off of my legal salary because I'm still growing this brokerage. Yeah. I try not to touch that at all, and I haven't, thankfully. That's awesome. But in a situation where my legal side didn't do as well, I mean, that's why you have to have your reserves. You have yeah. to have yeah. something backing you. You gotta have cushion. Yeah. And you just you just don't. Live below your means. Yeah. If you're trying to build a business, <laughs> live <laughs> way below your yeah, means. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. you have to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This all right. It is, it really is. So many people don't realize, like, I think I was talking to David about this, it's like, uh, this is this is being a small business owner. It's constant, like, I'm doing so great. Oh my God, I'm the worst in the world. How am I doing it? How am I surviving? Yeah. And it's like, no, 
gosh, you have amazing. <laughs> this is yes. crazy, like, emotional thing that you wrote. Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm in slumps. It's, then people reach out to me, hey, I know you're doing so great. And I'm like, am I? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so you're like totally, like, discouraged. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. It's not worth it. And then all of a sudden, it, like, picks back up and it's like, I'm amazing. Yeah.
And did you, was, was it hard for you to like let go of those people or was it just kind of like an epiphany, like we're done? It was kind of like we're done. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, honestly, we're just kind of like we're done. Because I, I don't even have the time to entertain that, that yeah. much because I'm too busy doing my thing. Yeah. So if you want to reach out to me, no hard feelings. It takes more energy to be angry than it does to just keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'll say hi, but I yeah. just don't have the time. Yeah. You ever, okay, I'm sorry. I'm really keeping you here. I love it. Do you, <laughs> love it. <laughs> Do you ever feel like weird about posting or promoting yourself on social media because you know the people that know you that maybe aren't in that clique are going to be judging you just because they're hate, like they're just jealous? And they hate us. Yeah, they're 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 Yeah, uh, yeah, that or I like sometimes I just like like it and just leave it alone. 
you don't want to be disrespectful and make people feel awkward either. Yeah, yeah. Not that they were thinking of that, but right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not here, but as women, we're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that wraps up this video. Thank you so so much for being here. Oh, you were oh, awesome, oh, and I I'm gonna come up with new questions and have you come in again because I feel like you're such, yes. like I just feel like you're so smart and like so all oh, the access to business and women. So. That's about it, guys. I hope you guys like this video. I'm going to leave all the links down below to get in touch with Jessica here. Um, Jay Figgy. Jay Figgy. Jay Figgy. Figgy Facts. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Until next time, work hard, dream big, eat cake. Bye, guys. I know it's so weird. That's my outro. But it I, love it. I love it. <laughs>